About 8 a.m., I'm about to take a ride over to our neighbor's property. He had lost a barn in the snow, and he said that if we can pull it apart, we can have the materials. Okay, so we're here. I got a lot of this cleaned up yesterday, but I still have some tin to pull off here. Get some of these roof joists down, and we'll get them over to our barn to reassemble in the spring. Well, there you have it. All the tins off. It was a little sketchy. Definitely sketchier than I'd like, especially being so far from the hospital. But we got all the tin off. We're gonna go unload, and then we'll come back and start disassembling these roof joists.
Okay, so we got the roof off and now I got to remove these big beams here. We're going to get the cattle fencing off them and then we're going to uh, probably have to cut them down because they're sunk in cement, but we'll get it done. We got a lot of rose hips. Okay, we're all cleaned up here. We're gonna head back over to our barn with the final piece and then I'm done for the winter. This was a bigger project than I wanted to take on this late in the season, but where we have that barn there and um, we're gonna need materials for it, which are very hard to get up here. I thought it was a, I thought it was a worthy job. Well, this is gonna be a project for us in the spring. If the snow holds off, I'll try to get some of these roof joists up and maybe some of this metal roofing on to try to keep some of the weather off it. But I don't know, there's not much time left in the season and I still got a lot of firewood to get. Okay, so we got the first load unloaded here. What we actually intend to do with these beams is we intend to use them to replace the foundation here on the cabin. Uh, the cabin foundation here has gotten a little wonky over the years, especially when these cabins aren't lived in. We can get up to 12 feet of snow a winter here, and all that weight on the roof really puts some pressure on them. So we're gonna replace them with these beams and uh, some poured concrete, maybe a nice poured concrete footing, put the beams on top of it, and that should keep us sturdy for the next 20 to 30 years. So we have a birthday today on the homestead. We do not have our oven in yet, so we are gonna make do with this and try to do like a stove top cake. It's the first time I've made this, so I'm winging it. Let's see how this turns out. I'm using my pressure canner again. So you just fill this with water, I think, and then I put some masons down here, also filled with water to kind of weight them down. I'm gonna put the cake pan on top of that and then a lid on top of everything. I can't believe that. Oh my god. Who would have thunk it? Yummy cake! how we render beef tallow today. Tallow is just beef fat that has been cooked down and all the impurities removed. We really like tallow as a shelf stable cooking oil. So after you render this down and pour it into your sterilized mason jars, you can keep that on the shelf. No refrigeration required. We also like it for its nutritional content. So tallow is very rich in vitamins A, D, K, and E, as well as CLA or conjugated linoleic acid, which is good for inflammation in your immune system and your metabolism. So it's very nutritious. It's also great for baking and frying and just general cooking. One way we get this very economically is we go to our local butcher and we'll just buy the suet, just the raw fat, and then we'll render it ourselves. First step with tallow is you're gonna take all the grizzly bits and the meaty parts and you're gonna cut that off and you're gonna discard that. And some people will grate, grate the fat and then render it like that. 
I just cut it up very small. Um, do it on super low. You don't want to burn it. You just want to kind of barely simmer it. Um, and this will go anywhere from four to six to even eight hours until everything has liquefied. It's all rendered down and all you're left with is the cracklings on the top which you can also save and eat as well. A story about this propane range, uh, one of our closest neighbors used to have this in their remote cabin in the bush um, and they are no, we're no longer using it so they just gave it to us, uh, which we're super thankful for. And the first thing I would like to do is go ahead and bring them something over as thanks uh, for giving this to us because we really, really appreciate that. When we had bought this cabin, it didn't have a working range and uh, appliances can be fairly hard to get here. You have to drive about five and a half hours to get them and that's if anyone down there even has them appliances are just hard in alaska in general got some spare parts and i think with a little tinkering we'll get her going here and it will suffice for now that too easy. well there you have it. it only took about 10 minutes and some spare parts and we got this so that it will hook up to the existing propane lines in the house. In no way encouraging anyone to play with propane appliances. Uh, there's probably people who do propane work for a living that would shake their finger at what I just did there. It's hard to get things up here and um, you know, you need a stove. You have a stove, you have to fix it. There's just not someone who's gonna come run up here and fix this. Here we go, got a stove. There we go, we're all hooked up and uh, Let's see if it works. It might not be. Oh. Huh? Oh, there's some propane in there. Obviously not much. But it does work. Yay! This has been rendering down for about four to five hours now, and it's ready to get strained out and put into our sterilized mason jars. And there you go. So these are gonna solidify, um, and when they do that, they will become like a white color. Okay, so we are running low on drinking water. I'm going to run on down to the creek here on the side of our property and we're going to show you how we get it. Dozer. Okay, so we made it to the creek where we get our water. A lot of our neighbors will just drink straight from the creek, but uh, we do boil it. You probably don't have to. There's also gold in this creek, and a lot of folks will come out here and pan. And there is a salmon run here as well, though I'm not sure of all the species yet, but I look forward to finding out. Well, there you have it, five gallons of drinking water. We do have a good well on our property, though I haven't had time to run the well line or get that all hooked up yet. Water and a grouse. Well, on our water run, we bagged a grouse, so I'm gonna start cleaning him up while Amy starts boiling the water. Okay, Chuck, you can have it. Our bird dog loves to eat the birds. I'm, I'm glad to have some like-minded trouble on me. I don't I wouldn't charge anything for it. We're going to be working on some temporary chicken housing for our hens. We're going to turn this old woodshed or root cellar into a place to overwinter them. We brought our hens up from our old homestead because they're hard to come by here in Alaska. It can be very expensive. 
So we're going to repurpose some of these old materials, see if we can get something so that they can be comfortable during the winter. And then in the spring, we're going to build a nice barn for them. They should be pretty happy in here though. Not super fancy, but it's finished. Um, as long as no bears come meddling around here and try to scratch their way in, these guys should be nice and safe and warm for the winter. favorite things to do with moose liver is pate and I'll show you how we make that. So we brown some bacon here and then we're gonna brown some onions in the bacon fat. And we're gonna throw in some garlic. I'm gonna add in the liver now. We have some thyme, parsley, a little bit of rosemary, some onion powder, some good unrefined salt, and then also a little dash of cinnamon too. Then I'm gonna add maybe a couple tablespoons of balsamic. Last but not least, we're gonna add the bacon back in here. And then I'm gonna take my immersion blender. Just gonna blend it all together. Thanks for you. All right, you're gonna save it for me? Yes. Thank you. Mm. Really good. Yeah.